Boston Strong. That's the message sweeping the nation today as the country pauses to honor innocent victims of the marathon bombing that happened one year ago to the day. And the numbers have some naysayers eating their words despite all the criticism we've heard around Obamacare. Some of it legitimate, some of it hyped here. The numbers say, well, wait a second here. 12 million people who previously didn't have health insurance will be covered this year. How will this play out in the election year here? Well, we'll talk about that. We'll break down the math. And we will also get into an issue right now coming out of Long Island where Congressman Peter King takes to Twitter to vent about the Pulitzer Prize being awarded to the Washington Post and The Guardian for those NSA stories. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Tuesday evening, April 15th. And tonight, we begin in Boston. That is where the city, remembering the three lives were lost and uh, the many lives lost here and the hundreds of others that were shattered following the act of terror that happened a year ago to the day. Tonight, ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports on the somber tributes held across the city of Boston earlier today. Moments of silent reflection at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. One year after two bombs exploded not far from here, hurting more than 260 people, killing three. America. A tribute to the lives lost and those forever changed. You've become the face of Americans' resolve for the whole world to see. They know your pride. They know your courage. Honoring the courage of the heroes of that day, and of survivors still healing from wounds, both physical and those unsettled somewhere deeper. Together we held each other in the face of terror. We grieved in the face of tremendous loss. The terror police say was created by brothers Tamerlan and Johar Sarnayev and the loss left behind. Officer Sean Collier shot to death police say by the accused bombers, grieved here today along with Crystal Campbell, Lingzi Liu and Martin Richard, killed when the bombs detonated. Today, wreaths laid at those two spots along the race route. Symbols of this year of healing, of reflection and unwavering resolve. Next week, we will run again. But on this day, we gather as citizens of Boston, Boston strong. And they are expecting record crowds out here for the marathon on Monday. Some of the survivors among those planning to triumphantly cross the finish line. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Boston. All right, thanks for that report, and let's bring in our panel right now. We've got Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, Andrew Whitman, senior political correspondent, and Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist and a former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association. Um, we've seen a lot of pieces, guys, especially over this weekend um, and leading up uh, into today. But it is amazing when you take yourself back a year ago, um, especially from... For those of us in this area, I'm not comparing it obviously to 9-11, but those same feelings of uncertainty and um, what changed in America on that day, it was amazing, I thought, though, the resolve that we saw coming out of Boston and nationally. Um, and then a year ago, um, how many people went right back to the same spot here? I think in, it's not too Pollyannish to say we've seen out of the worst times in this country some of the most heroic and some of the best uh, that we have to offer, and I think Boston, no exception. No doubt about it. I, as, you, as you're speaking, I'm thinking back to a year ago, that man that literally carried some people yep. uh, that had lost limbs, and he went back and forth trying to help everyone. And so, especially on this day, we're all Boston strong, and it's, it's reminiscent and reflective of, uh, we certainly here can relate to what they're going through. But it's amazing that the city of Boston, they are continuing, they didn't let this stop them. The marathon, I believe, is what, on Monday? Yep. It's, it's coming up very mm -hmm. soon. It's remarkable that they are going forward and they're not letting this stop them. You know, I, I got in a car the night of the Boston bombing to report for it for RFL yep. and for Fios the next day. And I just remember walking around that Tuesday, because it was uh, the day after the bombing was a Tuesday, the marathon and the bombing was a Monday. Uh, and everybody there was already saying, no, no, we're coming back. We're go we'll be in the marathon next year. I'll come back and I'll stand in the finish line again next year. And it, 
the resolve was there immediately from that day. So the, so the resolve of the people of Boston that we're seeing in these reports, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, you know, it, this, I guess the only surprise is that these things don't happen maybe more often. You know, we see these happening all around the world in other I mean, places. Uh, to that point, there's a resignation. People said, sure, we're going to have a greater even police presence than we had a year ago. But you can't bulletproof 26 and a half miles. You can't stop every sporting event. And the things that came out mm -hmm. of it were how huge a role the sports played in Boston for, I mean, do you remember the, the, the anthem they game? did at the, at the Bruins game and what happened at Fenway Park and even David Ortiz and, and how in some ways he became a voice for the city and then how the marathon was an event and now a year later how many people still connected to that event, the Celtics doing their thing. I mean, it was, it was throughout, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I think a huge part of it is all the victims, especially people who lost their limbs, they went back and they've been very present in the last year. And, and I think for many people, um, that was more than just symbolic. No, it was, look, the, as we spoke today, the, you, you can't destroy the resolve of the American people simply by a, a terroristic act. That, that has not worked in the past. It's never worked in the history of this country and it work, won't work today. What we've learned from this Boston incident is how do we do better to secure Americans here at home? Uh, but you can never stop our resolve. We mm. will, and we have proved that we will continue to get stronger and stronger and move forward. Though I would point out, I, I think there's a lesson in, in figuring out how to react without overreacting. And, and I think they, you may have seen that more in Boston than we've seen from other incidents that we've had, where there has been a reaction, but it's not Hey, listen, it's, it's, it's not media. a military sound. I mean, it's, us, it's our business, right, Andrew Dom? I mean, it's we've seen people identify wrong people. Uh, we've seen people here identify uh, uh, photos where they say these are the guys. It turned out they were completely wrong. Look how CNN jumped the gun here and announced that they had somebody in custody when they didn't. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of learning, but uh, unfortunately or fortunately, we are the conduits to public, and I think we've learned through these things. You've got to be a little bit more careful on how you get out that information. Okay. When we come back, everyone, we come closer to home, and we'll start off in Jersey where the Bridgegate scandal caused Chris Christie to break a sweat over his staffers. What interview notes from that taxpayer-funded investigation reveal? Well, we'll be right back with those details and more.